Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Emmy Award nominee Lorene Scafaria, who directed two key episodes in the final season of Succession, Honeymoon States, and Living Plus. Uh, two of my favorite episodes of the entire season, I, I have to say. I just you you also directed last season's uh, uh, Too Much Birthday, so I feel like you're a Kendall whisperer. So I guess just briefly here to start, what were your thoughts on the the finale? It was so tragic, and I just I guess like what were your thoughts on that before we get into your incredible episodes? <laughs> We could talk about that forever if you want. Um, it's a perfect episode. It's a perfect ending. I don't. I don't know how they did it. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's a show that aims quite high uh, for you know referencing everything from The Godfather to King Lear, but um, I think it achieves it, and uh, I just think it was so satisfying in a way. It wasn't as steeped in the same sort of kind of tear jerking emotion as as other episodes but uh, i'd say it was the most brutal <laughs> i think the most brutal things happened in this episode the sort of violence but i think everyone ended up where they should because it's a it's a tragedy so it it still gives you some wins you know jerry carolina willa <laughs> i think willa's uh in the best shape out of everybody yeah. she's, gonna, she's gonna do well i feel like for herself right the, yeah, the couch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think that'll be good i i thought of it too because like it, it is such a tragedy and the show itself is i think a great tragedy and like you mentioned like the godfather i feel like it is definitely in line or in league with that as a work of art but i was thinking of in honeymoon states i feel like especially for kendall and like i said you got to do a great season three episode with, with about uh focused on kendall as well but like when he sees uh, the piece of paper with his name on it, that really does kind of like set him on the path again that we see him end up in here. And then the, the, the sets him up for the finale, basically. And all that starts in Honeymoon States because he had not really maybe been kind of maybe put that on the back of his mind the way the seasons had played out previously. So I guess like just in general in, in Honeymoon States, I guess like how did, and how did you talk to, like how did you and Jeremy kind of discuss that moment for Kendall and especially like how it would kind of like reverberate through the rest of the season, I guess? Oh, well, it was just, it was like a bolt of lightning as soon as that piece of paper came out. And it was, um, you you saw the three siblings having that, their kind of last pure moment where they're sitting there looking at the obits and um, bonding over, you know, the... Uh, the memory of their father. And I think, yeah, once that piece of paper comes out, you know, for Kendall, it's not just, are you CEO or not? It's, uh, did, did dad love you or did he disown you? <laughs> you know, there's just such a dramatic difference between those two. And I think dad giving him power is that, is that expression of love. So, you know, to take Kendall in a way, it's a full arc, those three episodes I got to do with him. Um, certainly, you know, starting him off in like a high manic state at his, at his birthday party and taking him down to the to the dumps uh, by the end of that. And here, you know, I mean, he's knocked out by his father's death, but he, in the end, he's, he's trying so badly to fill his shoes and thinks he's kind of back on top. And um and then in Living Plus, you know, I got to take the the siblings again and and sort of the brothers were feeling much more unified and Shiv was on the outs. And then she sort of carved that, uh, you know, uh, hole between the two brothers by the end and, and Kendall was on top. And so, yeah, I mean, what an arc of an, the entire show to to just to end him in that place just wandering forever with with Colin behind him and looking out at the ocean just passing him by. Um, but yeah, no, we spoke so much. I mean, there were so many different moments for for Kendall and and with Jeremy. And I love working with Jeremy. I I he's such a thoughtful actor. He um he's so collaborative, but he he also has a vision. And um I think he'd make a great director. I hope he never does because because I, you know just think he's got such a gift um that that he brings as an actor but but it it is like he sees his own arc you know and he and he adds so much to it and my job is really just to help calibrate and give him space and uh you know create environments where he 
felt like he could do his best work. And so it it really depended. I mean, there are moments like him doing the giant product launch and living plus. And that was something that, you know, just wanted to make sure that he felt uh, as real as, as possible when he stepped out onto that stage. So it was about, you know, obviously over planning on our part, because that was a heavy day for us, but in a way not wanting to over plan with, with him. Um, and so it's always a balance. And with all the actors, you know, everybody has different approaches. And so, you know, it's a very exciting part of the the job actually to, to work with so many different kinds of actors. Right. In Living Plus, I mean, I, I'm not just saying this because we're chatting. Like that was my, like one of, I would say my favorite episode of the whole season, obviously, except probably like, the finale, like we're saying, is like an incredible work of art. But I love Living Plus because I found it really <laughs> does so much. I guess maybe because you have like the three of them are, if not working together, they all have great arcs in that episode. And obviously it is such a big Kendall episode, but you have this great stuff with like Roman, I found like incredibly compelling and Kieran obviously is incredible. And then uh, that's the episode where Tom and Shiv kind of like re-engage their relationship a little bit in corrosive and, and perverted ways, obviously. And, and it just is so wonderful. And I guess, like you said, like, I, I guess I think one of the things I love about your episodes is that you have they are so balanced and you're kind of like juggling all these balls in the air. And like you said, you have like all these different actors who are all probably very different performers and stuff, I guess, like, yeah, like, how do you kind of like, like, and, and, and again, coming into the show, that's like a well-oiled machine, I guess, like, yeah, just how do you like approach all of that and like make it work so well? Because I do think there is something about the episodes you direct that have that kind of like, you know, buoyancy or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, directing in TV, it can sometimes be so by the numbers, you know, um, but to Jesse and Mark's credit, um, there was just a lot of freedom for the directors, you know, <laughs> we're all very distinct. Uh, we all made different choices. We all found different ways into the visual language. It's it, it's just incredibly collaborative, but it's still, you know, it's succession. <laughs> so um, I always had a plan, but it really works best when you go in and and just play in the way that's best for the actors and best for the writing just to keep it alive you know I, th I think they chose which directors for which episodes for very distinct reasons of course there's a great flow to it because like you said it's such a well-oiled machine um you know six was so interesting and all the episodes were so interesting and different for me um because Kendall's birthday it was you know pretty it was a spectacle but it was pretty well contained and then uh, to do Honeymoon States, Logan's Wake, you know, it was so daunting, obviously, to follow episode three, which was so brilliant and seismic. And um, and I, of course, again, just got such, so lucky with such a brilliant script by Jesse and, and Lucy Preble. And, um, but yeah, the siblings arc is so uh, fascinating. I mean, Roman you know, that scene in the car at the end of six, listening to the edited video of his dad over and over that that's, I think that's my favorite scene we shot, even though I, I'm just completely spoiled with all the Shiv and Tom stuff in that episode. And of course, Kendall's like big rise and, and uh, unexpected win, you know, but um, again, it would depend. I mean, they were so, um, to Jesse's credit, I mean, he's just a, you know, just such a genius, obviously, but he's also so kind and and listens. And sometimes I would get choked up thinking about how heard I would feel on a show like this, where it didn't need to, you know, he didn't need to listen to me at all. Um, but certain, um, certain scenes in that episode, like Roman on the back of the golf cart or, um, Kendall at the end at the beach, you know, those were scenes that I really pushed for and hoped for and, and, um, and was just so grateful again to just, you know, have a crew of people and this, this incredible text. And that was the joy for me. I, I, I directed theater before I ever directed anything else. And, and so this experience has just made me such a better director to, to direct somebody else's writing I mean this writing obviously but um that's been that's been something that I you know I don't experience all the time and so um yeah I, I just learned so much from this entire group of people and from and from just uh the leadership all around you know as a again in tv you're like a special guest you know it's a, such a strange thing you're supposed to come in and 
run a set basically and obviously make a ton of decisions but um you know it's still Jesse's show and so you know for me moving from film for the most part where <laughs> uh you know directing is so different it's um I don't know I just love this experience and I, I I can't believe how lucky I got with these these episodes with these scenes with focusing on the siblings and focusing on Tom and Shiv and um you know yeah giving Kendall his full arc and finding all these moments with with Roman I mean I'm you know I'm a diehard fan so for me it's like give me Frank and Carl all day give me Jerry give me you know put them in the put them in a pantry and I mean you know I'd, I'd like to spend six hours there so. I, I agree love them so much I, in, in, in living plus you have a great a Carl I feel like there is a great uh in, in that episode the great old guard versus like new guard right because you have like uh, Carl and Kendall have this great moment and where Carl really never has seemed like that aggressive before, right? And then I, I it even, and that's the part where he's like, we're both basically holding each other, holding each other's dicks, I think is that the line or something like that, I'll paraphrase. But it yeah. made me laugh because in, I think in the finale or in the, I'm sorry, in, in, in the penultimate episode, Kendall repeats that kind of to Roman uh, yeah. about Menken. And I was like, this is the way this show is just the way the writing ties it all together is really fascinating. And so great. Like, and Kendall in that scene that you, you got in, in living plus doesn't seem like maybe, I don't know. It's like, you're not sure if he's taking Carl seriously. Right. Cause maybe he never has or whatever, but clearly he's processing that. And then also you get these great moments, with David Rash. So this is a long way of saying like, I guess like that scene I really loved. And then also the Jerry and Roman scene uh, again, another key moment that in hindsight, was even more key because it's one of the few scenes they really have in the back half of the season. I think there's only one other scene between uh, Kieran and 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 J. J Smith Cameron. So I guess like just going into that Roman scene, just like what was I guess like how did you guys kind of discuss that and especially like all the layers of that relationship? I guess that we have to like get into that scene. Yeah, I mean, I was so glad to have a Jerry Roman beat. Um because I've been fascinated by their relationship from, from the beginning. And, um, and it doesn't get wrapped up in a bow, you know, by the end of the series. Although I think him sitting there <laughs> with that martini um, spoke a lot mm -hmm. and, and, and how he did see her, you know, he sees her through the glass coming into the office and that's the moment he really did break down in that episode. Um, I hate to, be clinging to that you know I had nothing to do with it but man I just watched it for the second time last night it's just so good um but yeah I mean we approached that you know that was like like everything you know you want to keep it alive and, and make sure that the actors feel comfortable talking over each other and um so we'd often try to mess it up you know if it felt a little too neat um I remember people were had, you know, people were sick at different times. And that that scene kept getting pushed and pushed. And it was so scary to think that there might have actually been a world where we couldn't have shot that. Um, there might have been a world where it had to be over the phone. <laughs> you know, it was just like, they have to be in the room together. They just they just have to be in the room together. So I didn't even care what location we, we almost changed a full location that would have had a huge domino effect in the scheduling. But I, I just thought, I don't care as long as they're face to face, you know? And so I think you see Roman has lost it a little bit before this moment uh, when he's firing the head of Waystar Studios. And um, and I think, you know, the, his relationship with Jerry has been chipping away. I mean, just, I keep thinking of this scene in episode three where he's actually so sad and she walks out of the room puts his head against the wall. And and to me, that was sort of the, I don't know, this moment, this very vulnerable moment where he reached out to her and he didn't get something back. And so, you know, it's all these women of a certain age to, to even see him running to his mother in the last episode, you know, it's all very interesting what, where he was looking for comfort and where he didn't get it. <laughs> And what he's still thinking about, you know, I've heard so many different interpretations of him sitting at the bar there at the end of and uh, that last shot. Um, and I, I think it's a lot. I think it's everything. You know, I'm yeah. sure he is feeling a little free and I'm sure he's also, you know, feeling loss and and he, you know, he'll he'll never be the same, obviously. And um, 
but it's a yeah a fitting ending i i think for someone who maybe couldn't accept love unless it was hurtful you know yeah i mean i was thinking that too and like especially like with the scene between them and in your episode in living plus is like we had no like we know that logan i think um caroline says this in in the second last in the third season about like when she's talking to Shiv and she's like, oh, he would kick a dog and like he wants to like to come back. And that's kind of how he treated his kids, right? Like he's going to just keep pushing them away and knowing that they're going to come back. And Roman like trying to dad it, maybe doing that with Jerry and then not getting that. And like, she's not going to do that, right? Because she's like maybe different, obviously was not, is not going to respond to that. Like maybe the kids did and like Roman feeling just a lost and adrift from that, right? Like, I don't know. I just found that like the whole thing is just really interesting. And like, yeah, like, I just love, I love take that yeah. abuse and turn it into some, you know, the abuse, whatever childhood, all these things that mark you, whatever, before you're five, before you're 13, whatever. And and I think, you know, there's sadists and masochists in this show. Um, and it, uh, it, it doesn't always reveal itself. It maybe isn't always like that, but I think even to see Roman running into the crowd in episode nine, like, what was he trying to, he was trying to get beat mm -hmm. up? Yeah. I think. You know, I don't think he's asking for, I don't necessarily think he's asking for his wound to be opened up on Kendall's shoulder in that moment. I, I don't think that was one of those moments, but I think that was one of those big dog, little dog moments where, you know, now someone has to play dad. You he's know? Dad, Kendall is dadding it, right? In that yeah, case, like, yeah, like even yeah. getting down further down and down and down. I, you, you I, we talked about Kendall here and like the presentation and stuff. I guess like one of the things I think that people really liked about Living Plus is that also it gives Kendall, like you said, like he does get a win there and it is almost unexpected because I think we've been conditioned to watch him fail or lose and a lot of times comically and then obviously here in the finale, like incredibly tragically. But like, yeah, like when you know that the audience is maybe expecting mm. uh, him to not succeed in that. Like, does that help? Like, does that help you create some kind of suspense or surprise there in a way too, because of the way, and are you able to like kind of generate that a little bit in the way the presentation is going? Because I think, again, not to remember, but to me watching it you the first time, you're like, oh shit, he's actually doing this, right? Like, it's like kind of, you're expecting it to go so badly because he's Kendall. And then it's like, oh no, he's actually really good at this maybe. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> I think that's why the flight jacket even helped, you know, which was a Jeremy edition that, that was just so great and so exciting. Because, you know, just seeing him in a bomber, you start to think this is going to go terribly wrong. Um, you know, in the show's history, there's so much anxiety and tension built into the idea of Kendall getting up on stage or putting a microphone in front of him. Um, so, yeah, uh, it 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 feels full circle for me in this way. This this episode is that that upside down to Kendall's 40th where you. You just knew if he did that, he was going to fail miserably. Um, but that was so much fun to play with the levels of of this, with the product launch. I mean, again, like I said, it was just such a major day, you know, 300 extras who all had to keep something a huge secret, um, which I think they did because of how important they knew they were to this scene. Jeremy had 300 scene partners and he came out and thanked them all after, you know, the whole room just like literally like, leapt to its feet like to their feet like cheering for him they were they're so impressed and felt deeply appreciated and um yeah I think I think taking all of Kendall's manic ideas you know starting with with his birthday planning or even before that you know L to the OG <laughs> and he's he's just we're so used to seeing him flame out um or anyone flame out really for, for all their big ideas. It does keep happening. It's what's so painful about watching them get along or seeing them have these moments of levity because you just know it couldn't possibly last, you know, but um, yeah, that product launch was, was, was major, you know, and that was something that um, so much went into the planning of that, but there was, there was just such a feeling that was conjured by, um, what Stephen Carter and his team did with production design of it, these these screens that we went with. And it was funny to just the most subtle changes, like where this sort of camera was placed for the live feed. You know, if it was if it was on one side, it felt like some typical, you know, Microsoft sort of corporate product launch. And 
somehow on the other side, it felt incredibly fascist. So we went with that. <laughs> and uh, I think, you know, there, there are a lot of there were a lot of cool little mini things in there that were fun. We put three spotlights on him so you could see that there are three shadows behind him kind of echoing his his siblings not being there on stage with him. And, um, you know, just wanted to live in that and build that tension. I mean, the show is so it's so great for so many reasons. I mean, giving you all these what, you know, people call cringe moments and um uh, I certainly squirm from a lot of those those moments, but I think the writers, they're just and Jesse, you know, they just they subvert all your expectations all the time. Even me, you know, as the director and as a fan, I would always, you know, I'm sure I lean into some some sort of fanfic probably sometimes, <laughs> but I think they they show great restraint always, even with this finale. I mean, what restraint? The things you don't know. You know, the things that aren't fully solved, um, the place that you leave everybody, you know, it's just um, it's just so brilliant. Really, to the, I feel like it was like, to, like to the, like Jesse in the finale, like the way the show wraps is just so true to the show. And like the discipline I think it would take to do that, I am remar- I find remarkable because like, I think there's an easy way to be like, well, we can let them off the hook or whatever. We're kind of give, like lean into maybe some of the fanfic aspects of it and just like to go right down the line uh, I just love the last we have to wrap up and like I think we could probably talk about this show seemingly for hours so I, I do appreciate this time but <laughs> yeah, really you good have, yes. <laughs> you have a great uh the show obviously like the the, the writing is so good and, and the memes I'm sure are amazing there's one from living plus that I love that I used with my friends we text in our group chats is Kendall going well I'm not gonna fave it uh, about the Lucas tweet which is so goddamn funny and I just love that moment and his line reading is so perfect and I guess like when you're like, do you know that that's going to be something that people like really respond to it in the moment, or are you kind of do you not? I guess there are, there are some. No, no, I think I think so. I mean, I you know, again, you just I think that's what's so brilliant. I don't think I don't even know that anyone's leaning into anything like that. You know, I don't I don't know that Jeremy knows how. That's I take it back. I, you know, to his credit, I think he does know how funny things are, and but I. And Living Plus was honestly the funniest he has ever been. There are things on the cutting room floor. There's about a half hour of that episode that didn't, you know, make the cut that, um, yeah, I, I really, I, I long for that episode. I long for the for the feature length episode because it is, you know, you just you just see so many different colors of of everybody, obviously, when you when you, um, you know, I'm spoiled rotten with an 88 page script. So it's all about just culling it down. And, and that's part of what these, these writers and, and Jesse and what, what they do so well is just, uh, you know, yeah, know when to say when. Um, but there are moments for me that feel, I mean, again, like that, that flight jacket was one of those things I was secretly hoping was going to work out because it was such a great, brilliant idea. And it just felt like, you know, you know, some, you don't want to put a hat on a hat, but sometimes you got to put on a hat, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> Really true. Really true. Uh, yeah. We have to wrap up with Lorene Scafaria, uh, incredible director of Succession, a Living Plus, like we said, in Honeymoon States, uh, an Emmy Award nominee as well for, for Too Much Birthday. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. 